China's C919 aircraft has entered service and on the surface it looks like a great success. But behind the official milestones, airlines are operating it with remarkable caution. Quiet aircraft changes careful route selection and contingency plans reveal growing uncertainty. What began as a symbol of technological independence is now viewed as a sensitive operational task. The real question is no longer whether the C919 can fly, but why airlines are hesitant to rely on it daily. How might this caution shape its future in commercial service? Let's discover. In the commercial aviation industry, the way an airline quietly allocates its fleet often speaks volumes more than any official announcement. With the C919, the current operational model exhibits a form of soft abandonment. Not a complete shutdown, but rather limiting the aircraft's role to the least risky conditions. Even China Eastern, the largest customer and iconic partner of the program, avoids deploying the C919 during peak hours, where even a small delay could have a ripple effect across the entire network. Instead, the aircraft is primarily used on short, less connected routes and during off-peak times environments that allow the airline to absorb operational risk at the lowest cost. But if an aircraft is ready for widespread commercial operation, why hasn't it been delivered on the most critical flights? This is because it differs from the introduction phases of many previous new aircraft models. Once airlines have sufficient confidence, they often quickly deploy the aircraft on high revenue routes to optimize their investment return. The fact that the aircraft hasn't frequently appeared on critical flights suggests that operational confidence is still being tested, not yet established. More importantly, soft abandonment isn't a public failure, but a defensive strategy. The aircraft is still flying, still being promoted, but it hasn't been assigned missions where any malfunction could cause significant financial image and schedule damage. In this context, the airline's caution isn't unusual. It reflects how the aviation industry reacts when the long-term reliability of a program remains questionable. So what specific risks are the airlines mitigating? Are they issues of technical stability, maintainability, or predictability in daily operations? Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to turn on notifications so we have the motivation to bring you more exciting things to discover. Thank you very much. In the overall picture of Comac's narrow-body aircraft, the risks stem not only from purely technical factors, but also from the way the program was built or has yet to build trust with the market. Operational problems, when they arise, are often responded to with public relations phrases like operating smoothly or everything under control instead of detailed technical reports or clear announcements of corrective measures. In the aviation industry, where safety and reliability are paramount trust, doesn't come from avoiding mentioning incidents, but from transparency in how they are handled. Compared to Boeing or Airbus, where technical issues often lead to independent investigations, public reporting, and clear corrective action procedures. The level of transparency surrounding the C919 remains limited. This lack of information becomes a unique risk because for airlines, ambiguity is often more concerning than the technical fault itself. Alongside the issue of trust is a very real challenge regarding economic competitiveness. While it boasts better fuel efficiency than older generation aircraft like the A320CEO or 737NG, it is still about 10 to 15% less efficient than comparable competitors like the A320neo or 737 MAX. In today's commercial operating environment, this difference is significant enough to directly impact profitability, especially on key routes. Consequently, Chinese aircraft are unlikely to be the preferred choice for profit-critical flights, where every percentage point of cost is carefully calculated. This explains why many airlines tend to have very clear roles within their fleets. Western aircraft are prioritized for economic objectives, while the C919 primarily fulfills strategic or policy-related roles. When these two factors are placed side by side, 
the lack of transparency in information and limitations in operational efficiency become apparent. The biggest risk to this aircraft doesn't lie in whether it can fly or not, but in its readiness to gain the trust and use of airlines as a truly profitable tool. But even disregarding the trust and cost factors, a crucial question remains. Is the jet's maintenance and technical support ecosystem large and deep enough to ensure stable operation as the fleet begins to expand? In commercial aviation, fleet size is not just a number, but the foundation for an efficient operating ecosystem. With aircraft, the current operational scale of only a few dozen aircraft creates a structural disadvantage. At this level, there isn't enough density to optimize spare parts, inventory enough frequency to standardize maintenance procedures, and not enough operational data to accelerate the improvement cycle. As a result, maintenance costs per aircraft are higher. Air Operator Certificate, or AOC, for short processing times are longer, and fleet rotation capacity in the event of a malfunction is significantly limited. In a small fleet, each technical malfunction carries a greater weight than usual not only in terms of cost, but also in terms of its cascading impact on flight schedules and operational stability. Furthermore, the issue isn't whether a malfunction will occur, but whether the small fleet has the resilience to absorb them. Furthermore, the limited scale also brings with it a less discussed consequence, a slow learning cycle. Fewer flights mean less data. Less data means that adjustments from engineering to procedures are made more slowly and cautiously. While large aircraft programs can burn through the initial phase with high operating density, to quickly stabilize, the C919 is forced to proceed in small steps. This means each problem persists longer in the system, and each improvement lags behind the pace of market development. When the pace of improvement lags behind the pace of competition, the operational advantage erodes very quickly. These inherent limitations also become more sensitive when placed in the context of supply chains and geopolitics. Despite being promoted as an autonomous program, the aircraft still depends on foreign suppliers for engines and many key systems. Past precedents regarding export restrictions have demonstrated that this risk is not hypothetical. A single policy change could disrupt the delivery of spare parts technical support or system upgrades. For airlines, this is a particularly difficult risk to accept as it lies entirely outside operational control. Can a fleet affected by political decisions from outside the industry be considered a stable foundation for long-term network planning? Therefore, in fleet management practice, the C919 is often viewed as a strategic backup option rather than an operational cornerstone. It may fly, it may be present, but it is rarely placed in a position where disruption is unacceptable. This perspective doesn't stem from a specific failure, but from the aggregation of many small risks into a larger systemic risk encompassing scale supply chain and the ability to sustain long-term support. All of these factors ultimately converge on a deeper issue governance and incentive mechanisms. When strategic decisions are not accompanied by direct accountability for operational losses, risk is shifted downward. Airlines and frontline engineers become the absorbers of the consequences from disrupted flight schedules to the pressure to maintain safety under constrained conditions. In an environment where cost-cutting low compensation and non-technical pressures coexist, a culture of quality is inevitably eroded. So when safety and stability must compete with targets and political messaging, where does the real priority lie? The system's natural reflex in this context is to reduce risk exposure, fly less, avoid critical routes, keep aircraft out of hours when even a minor incident could have major consequences. This is not an individual decision, but a collective defense. And when an aircraft program inadvertently encourages evasive behavior instead of optimization, it's a sign that the problem goes beyond the technical aspect. It lies in how the entire ecosystem is trying to protect itself from unresolved uncertainties.
Ultimately, for the C-919 to operate freely in both domestic and international airspace, the challenge is no longer just technical perfection, but also institutional credibility. A commercial aircraft gains global acceptance not by meeting minimum certification thresholds, but by demonstrating that it can operate within the existing aviation ecosystem without special treatment. This means not only adhering to regulatory standards, but also to the unspoken expectations of airlines, insurance companies, leasing companies, and safety agencies who value predictability over symbolism. At the core of this transition is autonomy in decision-making. In the global aviation industry, trust is built on how manufacturers behave under pressure when schedules are delayed, costs increase, or unexpected problems arise. Programs that prioritize external goals over internal consistency often sound a silent alarm, even when no serious problems arise. Conversely, credibility increases when delays are accepted, limitations are acknowledged, and operational discipline is prioritized over short-term image. Equally important is exposure to the protected operating environment. Aircraft gain legitimacy through repeated operation under diverse and harsh conditions, climate infrastructure, management culture, and the business models of different airlines. Only through the accumulation of operational history does an aircraft prove its performance is not situational but systemic. This is not something that can be accelerated through announcements or demonstration flights. It emerges gradually through routine, uneventful, and low-profile operations. Ultimately, true operational freedom is granted by the market itself. When airlines can put an aircraft into service without having to justify that choice, to investors, insurance companies, or regulators, trust is established. At that point, the aircraft no longer needs to be defended or explained. It simply belongs there. And until the C-919 reaches that stage, access to international airspace will remain conditional regardless of where it is technically permitted to fly. From your perspective, what is the single most important step the C-919 must take to earn global trust? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. That's all about our video. Have a safe flight. Goodbye and see you again.